uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our uh, January 25th uh, Board of Education meeting for Hackensack Public Schools. If everyone would please rise to say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's remain standing for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. In accordance with the Open Public <coughs> Meetings um, Act, adequate notification of this meeting has been provided by advertising in the record and posting notice in the Board of Education Administration building and filing notice with the city clerk. I hereby call to order the regular public meeting Monday, January 25th, 2021 in, in the Hackensack High School Media Center at 6.15 or 6.20 p.m. Will you please do a roll call? Yes, and Mr. Bendezu is unable to make it this evening. Mr. Coleman? Here. Participating via Zoom, Mr. Nelly? Here. Mr. Goodman? Here. Mr. Oz is unable to make it this evening. Mr. Rodriguez? Here. Mr. Velez? Mr. James Vickery? Here. Mr. Powell will be, is expected. Great. We do have a quorum. <clears throat> Great, thank you. And so tonight um, we have the honor of um, administering the oath of office to Trustee Zani Lassane. So, Dora? And uh, it is my understanding that Ms. Lassane will be um, sworn in by Assemblyman Gordon Johnson. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm on board. We, uh, are we ready? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, do we, shall we start? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, we're good, we're good to go? Yes. All right, here we go. <laughs> Left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand. Yeah. <laughs> right, you yeah, raise your right hand, Zani, your right hand, there you go. Okay, and uh, repeat after me. I state your name. Donnie Lassane. Do solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. Same. And to the governments established. The governments established. In the United States. The United States. And this state. This state. Under the authority of the people. 
the authority of the people. So help me God. Help me God. Okay. I state your name. Hassan Hussein. Do solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I possess the qualifications. I possess the qualifications. Prescribed by law. Prescribed by law. For the office of member. Office of member. Of Board of Education. The Board of Education. And I am not disqualified. Not disqualified. As a voter. As a voter. Pursuant to R.S. Pursuant to R.S. 19 colon. 19 colon. 4 dash 1. Dash 1. Nor disqualified. Qualified. Due to conviction of a crime. To conviction of a crime. Or offense. Or offense. Listed in NJS. In NJS. 18A. A. Colon 12-1. 12-1. And that I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly perform. Perform. All the duties. All the duties. Of that office according. Of that office according. To the best of my ability. Best of my ability. So help me God. God. Congratulations. You're in. Thank you. And to, the, and to the members of the board there, uh, congratulations to you. I know you have a lot of work ahead of you with the difficulties with COVID-19 and other uh, budgetary issues, what, as, what have you. But uh, um, we, we are here to help you with this at the state level, also at the county level. So uh, congratulations to Ms. Zani Lassane and congr congratulations to this great board of education in the city of Hackensack. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. This is like a high school graduation. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> so, um, be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education determines it necessary to meet in executive session on Monday, January 25th, 2021, to discuss legal personnel, student-related matters, HIV reports, and negotiations. And be it further resolved that these matters will be made public when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Um, I move. Can we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Ira. All in favor? Uh, all right. All right. <laughs> Oh, there is no microphone that's easy. Okay. 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 Good evening. We'll do a roll call to convene back into public session. Mr. Mr. Bendezu, Mr. Oates are unable to make it this evening. Mr. Coleman? Here. Mr. Nelly? Here. Mr. Goodman? Here. Ms. Lassane? Here. Mr. Rodriguez? Here. Mr. Velez? Here. Mr. James Vickery? Here. Mr. Powell? Here. At this time, we would like to um, vote on the minutes of the December 14th and January 11th. Is there a motion to, on the effect? 
I'll move. I'll, I'll second it. On the roll call vote for December 14th and 11th, and January 11th, Ms. and Ms. Ms. Lassane, we just suggest that you abstain on these, please. Absolutely. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Donnelly? Ms. Donnelly? I believe I was absent on, was I not here on the 14th? And Correct. I would, so you abstain on the 14th? I abstain on the 14th, and I'm okay with the 11th. Thank you. Mr. Goodman? Uh, yes, on both. Okay. Ms. Lassan? Abstain. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Yes, on both. <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Velez? Yes, on both. Mr. James Vickery? Yes, to both. Mr. Powell? Yes, to both. Thank you. The Mr. Sapero, the auditor is having a difficulty. He thinks he can't locate us. Did he join the public meeting? He said he did. Then he must still be under I'm just going to call him. You could have a student report while you wait for them. I wish you just wait for them. Yeah. Dora, can we move on to the student report while yeah. you're working on that? Yeah. 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 Just keep on that. Student report and then superintendent's report. Mm -hmm. Who's calling? So, Mr. Tapero, we're we'll ready for the student's report. Can you bring the student in? The student was here earlier. It's going to look like you're now. Hi, the student is here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. Well, thank you and welcome. Hello. Hi. How are you? So, a um, few things. So as you know, today was the Hackensack High School um, ninth grade orientation. It was to be today, and we're gonna have a second one um, on Wednesday, the 27th. The students was participating in the building tour, so they they were giving a tour around the building. They got to meet the administrators and all the personal support they need throughout their four years of high school. Also, the Hackensack High School is offering the PSAT requirement for juniors and sophomores um, tomorrow on the 26th. So tomorrow, the sophomores and juniors have an option to take the PSAT. Also, the winter sport has begun. We have started men's and women's basketball, cheerleading and bowling. Students have been competing in the pre-screening question, um, questionnaire daily and, have enjo um, and we have enjoyed, we have enjoyed um, having them back. Uh, with no fans permitting, we are streaming all of our contests. So if, people got, if you guys wanna check them out, you, got, it, it could be on, you guys can go online to our um, Hackensack High School website and they'll all be there, all the streaming will be there. Um, with the end of the first semester approaching, now is the perfect time to join any clubs or activities. Students can learn more about the activities on our student page on Hackensack High School. And one more thing for, um, so the student government is hosting a uh, student night, a student, great, um, I guess, student game night for all the great levels. Each grade levels will get one and the school will do one in general. Um, this is a co um, collaboration with the PTSA. Um, it's a special opportunity. So, you know, students could play games um, virtually from their homes with their friends, families, and the faculty members. And that's all I have for you for um, January of 2021 for Hackensack High School. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Beam. Thanks, Thanks for the Beam. report. Thank you so we, much. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to move on to the superintendent's report. So good evening, everyone. Tonight is a special night for Hackensack Public Schools. Tonight, we have the privilege of recognizing a few of our many amazing staff members. Each year, Hackensack Public Schools participates in the annual Governor's Educator of the Year program. Accordingly, nominations were received for teachers and educational services professionals from teachers, administrators, parents, students, and community members from each building. 
One teacher, an educational services professional from each school, was then, get, then chosen for their achievements by a school-based selection panel. Join me in celebrating and recognizing the outstanding contributions of teachers and educational services professionals throughout the district that make Hackensack Public Schools so special. In a short moment, I will introduce each principal one by one to say a few words about their amazing staff members. Mrs. Zapparo, if we can start the slideshow. Thank you very much. Next slide. Okay, so first up for ECDC, I'd like to invite Miss um, Golem. Miss Golem, can you say a few words about your Teacher of the Year? Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Great. Amen. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's such a privilege to be here and to honor these two staff, the two staff members. I'm going to start with um, speaking about Miss Lauren Montabano, who is our um, teacher of the year. And Miss Montabano was um, nominated by one of our parents. And I think that is one of Ms. Montabano's very special gifts in that um, is this positive rapport that she establishes with um, parents. Um, Ms. Montabano started in Hackensack as a preschool teacher in 2007 at Hiller's School, and she's been an integral member of the ECDC staff since we opened our doors in 2013. Ms. Um, Montabano is known throughout the, dis the community as someone who inspires children from all backgrounds. A yoga instructor outside of school, Ms. Montabano has been a leader in bringing mindfulness activities um, for children, parents, and staff to ECDC. She was also instrumental in bringing school-wide celebration of Diwali to ECDC. Ms. Montabano is known for her positive attitude, her patience, her love of children, and her willingness to always lend a helping hand. Pleasure to nominate Ms. Montabano. Thank you. Congratulations, Ms. Montabano. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. So, okay. Then um, ECDC's Service Professional of the Year is Ms. Andrea Guzman who's a dedicated speech therapist who has worked with the Hackensack Public Schools since 2009 and has been with ECDC since we opened our doors in 2013. Students just love working with Ms. Guzman because she always makes learning fun by providing interactive therapy, which engages their participation. As president of the ECDC Social Committee, Ms. Guzman is constantly looking for ways to boost our staff's morale. She is an active member in many school committees, including Black History Month, Read Across America, Autism Awareness, the School Improvement Com Committee, and has been active in Better Speech and Hearing Month. It's just an honor to recognize Andrea Guzman. Thank you. Congratulations, Ms. Guzman. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, next up, I'd like to invite Principal Whitaker to speak about her winners at Parker School.
muted. Okay, I'll start again. <laughs> Mrs. Arlena Brinson Jones is an angel. She willingly assists her fellow colleagues on a daily basis. Her work ethics are superb. There is never a task too big or too small for Mrs. Jones. She never utters the word no. Her pleasant personality is infectious. People generally gravitate to her for comfort, guidance, and or advice. Mrs. Jones is also a coach extraordinaire. She's extremely approachable and works to ensure that teachers receive the correct materials, training, and resources. She collaborates with teachers in order to support instruction. She is a guided reading guru among, among many other things. In addition, Mrs. Jones always researches new programs or ideas. Hence, she is innovative in her approach to teaching. What she doesn't know, she will research and learn. There is nothing that she won't do to improve her craft. Finally, the students love Mrs. Jones. The teachers appreciate her hard work and her willingness to always fill in the gap. She is a humble servant who takes her calling seriously. Congratulations to Mrs. Arlena Brinson Jones for being chosen as the Governor of the Year teacher for 2020-2021. Thank you. Congratulations, Congratulations, Ms. Jones. Thank you very much. Okay, next up. Patricia Chandler is an extraordinary paraprofessional. She works well with both students and teachers. She is efficient and hardworking. But most of all, Mrs. Chandler is both kind and caring. Her presence exudes peace and tranquility. She is pleasant to parents, students, and staff members. Every day, Mrs. Chandler greets both the staff and students by stating, and I'll use today, happy Monday. This brightens everyone's day. Mrs. Chandler is always willing to learn. So a few years ago, she took it upon herself to become a certified Orton Gillingham instructor. Her work ethics and kind spirit inspires students to follow her lead by being studious, respectful, kind, and polite. As a dedicated paraprofessional, Mrs. Chandler works tirelessly to improve individual attention and she provides it to anyone in need. Congratulations to Mrs. Patricia Chandler, Parker Educational Support Professional. You rock. <laughs> Congratulations, Congrats. Ms. Chandler. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Principal Whitaker. <clears throat> Next up from Jackson Avenue School, we're going to invite Ms. Uh, Moncloa. Hello. Hello. It's truly an honor to speak on behalf of Mr. Moran to highlight two of Jackson Avenue's finest staff members tonight. Mrs. Camarada, the Governor's Educator of the Year for Jackson Avenue. Mrs. Camarada has outdone herself during remote instruction. She has converted her home into a full classroom and has spent the summer learning all new skills to better serve her students. She is a fully committed educator who works at optimal levels for the success of her students. We are proud to work with her. Mrs. Camarada has been awarded this prestigious recognition by her peers for her outstanding commitment, 
to her students and her profession, and for showing bravery, tenacity, and radical love for her students during remote learning. On a personal note, Mr. Moran and I would like to thank Mrs. Camarada for being a part of the pandemic team this summer, but really she's been that for us for the past few years. She is 10 steps ahead of me when it comes to security and safety. And because of her expertise, she has been a sounding board for our school-wide operations for years. She is equally passionate about academics. She's an advocate for all staff members and students and is the kind of demanding teacher that makes every administrative administrator better. Thank you, Mrs. Camarada, for being the consummate professional that you are, and I really want to be you when I grow up. Congratulations. Congratulations. Now on to our dear Mrs. Ms. Sylvia Gonzalez, she's our Service Professional Educator of the Year for Jackson Avenue School. Ms. Gonzalez is a joy to work with, says every teacher who has ever worked with her over the years. She's kind, energetic, patient with students, administrators, and families. This year, more than ever, we value these special qualities. Ms. Gonzalez has been awarded this prestigious recognition by her peers, for showing bravery, kindness, and radical love for students, families, and teachers during remote learning, Ms. Gonzalez has demonstrated an outstanding commitment to our school community. And on a personal note, Mr. Moran and I would like to thank Ms. Gonzalez for becoming an expert very quickly in everything this school year. She has learned to support everyone in the administrative as well as the technical side of this when we shut down on October 29th, I want this whole district to know that Ms. Gonzalez kept coming to the school and has continued to do so because of her unstoppable sense of responsibility for our community. Her kids are comets and she bleeds blue and gold, but not in words, not in t-shirts, in action, and we love her for it. She's an inspiration to Mr. Moran and me and our staff. We will never be able to thank Ms. Gonzalez for what she has done for us since last April. We love you. Congratulations, Ms. Congratulations. Gonzalez. Moving along, I invite Principal Dorsey Whiting. Good evening, Hackensack family. It is my pleasure to introduce two Hiller School stars. The first is Mr. Jeffrey Bach, our Educator of the Year. There's a beautiful quote by William Ward that states, the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, and the great teacher inspires. And Mr. Bach is a great teacher. He is the epitome of what a teacher should be. He is dedicated to students. He is always there when they need him and he goes above and beyond, beyond to help and accommodate his students. He has a quiet strength. He has made the transition to online learning fun and if you ask any of his students, past or present, they will tell you just that. Mr. Bach makes appearances at his students' extracurricular activities at night and on weekends. This really shows his dedication to the kids and they absolutely love seeing him. Mr. Bach is well respected by the colleagues at Hiller School and in the district. And just to let you know how awesome Mr. Bach is during this pandemic, he started a hiking club for our staff to try to keep our social and emotional wellness intact. Now I'm not one for outdoor education, but I did promise Mr. Bach that one day I would join them. Mr. Bach is a veteran who served this country with honor. And now he is an awesome teacher 
who serves his students with honor, compassion, and dedication. Congratulations, Mr. Jeffrey Bach. You are definitely a Hiller School star. Thank you. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our educational support personnel, Hiller School Star of the Year. I believe this quote sums up Mrs. Pomianic's demeanor, and it's by Winston Churchill, which says, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. And Mrs. Pomianic is always a giver at Hiller School, never expecting anything in return. She is a most caring, supportive, personable, and compassionate paraeducator. She treats every child like her own. It is known at Hiller's that Mrs. Pomianic has the patience of a saint. She has ways of connecting with students on levels that many don't. She remembers their likes, their dislikes, and little things from their personal lives. And on many occasions, Mrs. Ronzetti, who nominated her for this wonderful award, said that students come back and visit her and ask about Mrs. Pomianic because she's made just that great an impact on their lives. She leaves a positive impression and holds a very special uh, place in their hearts and in ours. Mrs. Pomianic is a sweet spirit and she is so deserving of this recognition for her many years of dedicated service to the Hiller School stars and staff. Mrs. Pomianic, congratulations you are definitely a Hiller School star. Congratulations, Mrs. Pomianic. Moving on to Fairmont School, we'd like to invite Principal Ashton Loeb. Mr. Sapero, is uh, Dr. Galliani available? We could come back to uh, Fairmount School. Okay, I'm sorry, can you hear me now? That's great. I'm so sorry. I was speaking away and I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure and I couldn't be more proud that Elizabeth Padovano represents Fairmount School for the 2020-2021 school year as the Governor's Educator of the Year. Elizabeth Padovano is a dedicated and active member of Fairmount School and the Hackensack community. During our ever-changing transitions with remote teaching since March of 2020, Mrs. Padovano has stopped at nothing to ensure her fourth grade students are engaged and learning. This year has been quite the adjustment and with every challenge, Mrs. Padovano is still managing to raise the bar in her virtual classroom and with her in-person students as of today. Her dedication to her student extends far beyond contractual hours on a daily basis. She serves on the ESSA committee, attends monthly PTA meetings, is a regular at after school events, and is always cheering students on during school events such as field day and mini marathon. Additionally, Mrs. Padovano is respected by her students, parents, guardians, colleagues, and administrators. Congratulations, Mrs. Padovano. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations. And now I'd like to introduce Dominica Panuccio. Dominica is a highly skilled and dedicated paraprofessional at Fairmount School. She has the ability to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the students she serves. 
Dominica has the superior ability to inspire students of all backgrounds and varying abilities. She recognizes how hard students work on their assignments and she consistently uses positive reinforcement in the classroom, both in person and virtual, while helping her students. Mrs. Panuccio is trilingual, being able to speak English, Italian, and Spanish fluently, which has proven to be a major asset in the classroom, our school, and for meeting with parents and guardians. Dominica embodies everything that makes a great paraprofessional who takes pride in her work with children. As a principal of Fairmount School, I am honored to congratulate Dominica Panuccio as our Educational Service Professional of the Year. Congratulations, Mrs. Panuccio. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up for the middle school, we invite Principal Galliano. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, good evening. Good evening. It is with great pleasure and an honor that I am here to talk about Ms. Nora Marr as Hackensack Middle School's Teacher of the Year. Ms. Marr is the type of teacher you strive to become when you decide to enter the profession of education. As students go through their teacher preparation programs in colleges and universities throughout the country, Ms. Marr is the example that they should be as every student's favorite teacher her colleagues' most trusted advisor, and her principal's most dedicated and loyal faculty member. Ms. Marr goes above and beyond to make our students feel good about themselves while teaching them about the historical nuances of the world in which we live. Ms. Marr is able to expertly bridge the gap between the past and the present to make history relevant to our students' lives. The positive impact she has on the students and families of Hackensack Middle School cannot be put into words. She is loved by her students for her warmth and wit, and they adore her, and have no problem telling other teachers that Ms. Marr is their favorite teacher because of the way she encourages them to succeed. If the students were asked why she would be the teacher of the year, they would tell you that she embodies all the qualities which make for a superior teacher. Kindness, compassion, fairness, humor, generosity, and she is a giver of second chances. I would add that she holds high expectations for all of our students, but knows that each child is an individual who may need more support than the child seated next to him or her, and whether it be academically or socially, emotionally. Ms. Marr knows how to meet the children where they are and assist them in ways they need in order to maximize their potential. In addition to all that she does in the classroom, Ms. Marr is the current corresponding secretary for our PTA and has served as the grade level li liaison in the past. She is extremely enthusiastic and energetic when it comes to doing things to promote student life and a positive climate at Hackensack Middle School. Ms. Marr is dependable and extremely positive member of our school community who participates in a number of extracurricular activities such as assisting with the organization of the sixth grade camp, writing grants to bring in guest speakers, and arranging several educational field trips each year. To sum it up in one sentence, Ms. Marr is the kind of teacher I would want for my own child because she fosters a love of school and learning in her kids through her extraordinarily nurturing ability to reach our children. Congratulations, Ms. Marr. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Ms. Marr. Okay, next we have Mrs. Linda McGowan. It is with great pleasure and an honor that I'm here to talk about Ms. Linda McGowan as Hackensack Middle School's Educational Service Provider of the Year. Ms. McGowan is the ultimate professional and child advocate and every second of her day at Hackensack Middle School is spent either speaking to a child, a parent or guardian, a child study team member or a teacher on the behalf of her students. As a school social worker, Ms. McGowan's heart is 100% with her students and their families. She maintains positive, warm connections with her families and those in the community or agencies that are working with her students. 
she not only completely knows her own job, but knows the curriculum at each moment for each subject for all of her students and works with the teachers and parents to address any specific issues with academics or behaviors that may impact each individual student. Ms. McGowan advocates for her students both within the school and outside as well. She attends events that her students participate in and actively encourages her students to participate in activities and events in the school and the community. She is passionate and compassionate in all aspects of her job and consistently goes above and beyond with both the staff and students in the pursuit of a positive school culture and climate. In addition to knowing the names of every single student on her caseload, Ms. McGowan's relationships with faculty and staff are incredible. Ms. McGowan finds a way to make every person she comes into contact with feel valued and cared for. She is kind, professional, and accommodating to all that come to her for support. This includes administration, teachers, students, and parents. Ms. McGowan rarely misses work and always does her job to the fullest of her abilities with a smile on her face. She is an overall incredible human being, coworker, friend, and counselor. Every single teacher who has had the pleasure of having her as their grade level school social worker has sung her praises. She continues to be an incredible asset to Hackensack Middle School and is deserving of being the Hackensack Middle School Educational Service Provider of the Year. Congratulations, Ms. McGowan. Congratulations, Ms. McGowan. Now I would like to invite Principal Montesano to speak about the high school. Good evening, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, our, the high school recipient of the Educator of the Year is Kelly Chef Carroll. Chef Carroll is our culinary arts teacher. As we began to transition to remote learning, Chef Carroll became increasingly concerned with the number of students who were struggling, both academically and emotionally. During an initial conversation with a parent, he realized how much our community was hurting as well, and he decided he wanted to take action. Due to the warm and inviting climate in his classroom, he was able to glean that many more families were in the same situation. He and his family started a grassroots program that organized volunteers and donations to feed our community. The Carroll family began using his culinary teaching platform to feed more and more families each week. During the height of the pandemic, he fed over 400 families and over 1,500 people per week just by donations alone. Our community rallied around this initiative. Everyone from police officers, firefighters, teachers, and alumni gathered at the family home each week to deliver food to our families. In addition to this wonderful initiative, Mr. Carroll is also a wonderful and engaging teacher. He provides his students with an opportunity to participate in real world culinary experiences and students learn about the history of food, the safe preparation and food distribution. He also incorporates school-wide literacy lessons into his daily routines through menus and creative wording describing his culinary adventures. Throughout his time here, we have seen more and more students choose postgraduate options in the field of culinary arts. The high school had over 60 um, nominations for the Governor's Educator of the Year, and I think 56 of them went right to Chef Carroll. So without further ado, I, the high school would like to congratulate Chef Carroll. Congratulations, Mr. Carroll. Okay, so this concludes our presentation. Um, We'll move on to our next thing. Uh, or should we have the auditor or should I continue with my report? No. <clears throat> Mr. Sapero, if we could invite the auditor in, please. So while we wait, congratulations to all of our recipients. As you can see, we have an amazing staff. Um, we're excited about what the future holds for next year's recipients as well. So thank you to all and congratulations. It's a well-deserved honor. Mr. Bliss, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I'd like to introduce to the board and to the trustees and public, Mr. Jeffrey Bliss. He is the uh, partner at Lurch, Vinci and Higgins and will present the annual outcome of the 
2020 fiscal year audit. Thank you, Ms. Zeno. Appreciate it. Uh, good evening, uh, board members. Um, we have completed our audit for the 2019-20 year and have issued our uh, report, which uh, each board member should have two reports, a comprehensive annual financial report, which is the bigger clear cover report and a smaller uh, report, which is the auditor's manager report. Um, our job as auditors is to express an opinion on your financial statements. Uh, we have expressed an unmodified opinion. Um, that's a clean opinion, uh, meaning that the financial statements that are in the CAFR uh, are fairly stated. They're uh, prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, and there were no scope limitations in performing the audit. An unmodified opinion or clean opinion is an absolute must in any audit. If it is other than unmodified, it means that the financial statements uh, have a material omission or error uh, or defect in them. So I'm very happy to report that Hackensack uh, Board of Education has an unmodified opinion. We're also required uh, to report on compliance with financial reporting on the government auditing standards. Um, we have one finding there, which we'll discuss later. And then we're also re required to give an opinion on your compliance with major federal and state grant programs. And again, I'm very happy to report to the board that we have an unmodified opinion or clean opinion on the district's compliance uh, with major federal and state uh, grant programs. Again, unmodified opinion is an absolute must. Um, we did have some findings related to uh, those programs, which we'll discuss later, um, but a very important aspect of the audit is our opinions on the financial statements and our opinions on the, the uh, compliance with state and federal grant programs was unmodified, clean in both instances. With respect to the how did the district do financially, um, if you want to follow along on page 76 of the bigger report, um, there is a summary of your general fund, fund balance. Um, the general fund is the major operating fund of the district, probably accounts for 95% of the expenditures uh, to operate the district. And on the bottom of page 76, uh, is a summary of the, uh, the fund balance. Just overall, the district ended the year um, with a little over 22.2 million in, in fund balances, 15.8 uh, million, 15.9 million was restricted, 3.3 uh, million was assigned, and roughly 3 million was unassigned. Um, in the restricted category, uh, the district has set aside by resolution in accordance with state statutes a nine, little over 9.1 million in capital reserve funds. Um, of that 9.1 million, 6.3 million is available to the district to fund future capital projects in the long range facility plan. Uh, so we, the district has at the end of June 30th, 2020, a uh, little over $6.3 million to fund any future capital projects that are in the long, long range facility plan. In addition to that $6.3 million, we had $2,826,605,000 that the district is using in its 2021 budget to fund capital projects in that budget. So uh, again, capital reserve has to be used for capital projects. We got 6.3 million we haven't earmarked yet and is available going forward to fund projects and 2.8 million, which is in the, the 2021 budget to fund projects. In addition to those restricted funds, we had maintenance reserve, a little over a million dollars uh, that we have not earmarked for any maintenance projects. And those again are available going forward to fund maintenance projects. Um, they're different than capital. Capital uh, adds value to the buildings uh, and to the facilities where maintenance just keeps the building in the current working order. 
Neither the capital reserves or the maintenance reserves can be used for operating expenses or must be used for what the reserves were set aside for. The district also had 300,000 in an emergency reserve. Uh, you know, that's kind of like a rainy day fund. Uh, very difficult to use those funds. Requires the commissioner's approval um, in most instances. Uh, when we ended the year, uh, June 30th, 20, after doing all the transfers into the reserve accounts, um, in New Jersey, the district is only allowed to have 2.7%, uh, 2% of its fund balance in what they call unassigned. That's completely unrestricted, uncommitted uh, fund balance. Anything over and above that is called excess surplus. Um, at the end of June 3rd, 20, the district had $3,720,000 uh, of excess surplus. Those funds must be used in the 21-22 budget as a revenue source, meaning when you start the 21-22 budget process, the district has on hand uh, $3.7 million to fund those expenses. Um, that's a very good position to be in for the district. Um, in addition to the 3.7 million, we had 1.7 million in excess surplus from the prior year, June 30th of 19, which the district is using in its 2021 budget to fund expenses. Those monies are no longer available going forward fund expenditures. Under assigned fund balance, we had a little over $2 million of open purchase orders. Um, these are monies committed for purchases uh, which have not been completed yet, meaning we ordered goods and they haven't been received, so we don't really owe anyone money, or we awarded a contract to service and the services haven't been rendered at the end of the year, but we've committed those monies for those purchases. Um, when those uh, goods are received and those services are rendered, those purchases will be, li li will be liquidated, and that $2 million by this point in time um, is pretty much liquidated has been spent. So they're no longer available. Um, in addition to the 1.7 million the district used of extra surplus to fund 2021 expenses, they used the under assigned fund balance, another million three to balance the 2021 budget. So of the 22.2 million, 1.3 million is being used this year to fund operating costs. That leaves us with the final unassigned fund balance or what they used to call surplus or free balance. Um, it's 2,996,464, a little under 3 million. It represents the maximum the district is allowed to have in that reserve, in that uh, fund balance category, represents 2% of the district's uh, budget as well as uh, an adjustment for extraordinary aid that we didn't budget for but received during the 1920 year. Um, again, overall, I would say financially, the district is in very sound, uh, very solid condition um, with, you know, nice reserves set aside for capital and maintenance projects, as well as uh, excess surplus that's going to be available to fund expenses in the 21-22 budget. So the end of the year in very good financial condition. If there's no questions, I'll go uh, into the findings in the smaller report. Hearing none. Um, in the smaller report, we have on page 15 and 16 a summary of findings. Um, we have findings in four areas, uh, which was financial planning, accounting, and reporting, school purchasing program, food services, which is the, the cafeteria accounts, and the student activity funds. Um, under financial planning and accounting, we had four findings uh, and four recommendations. Um, the first one is relating to uh, open purchase orders at the end of the year. Um, we noted in doing our audit, they were overstated, that some of those purchase orders were uh, invalid, we canceled them and put those monies back into fund balance. So, you know, it, we need to improve our year end uh, procedures to review those open purchase orders for validity 
And if they're invalid, we cancel those off the books and records of the district. The second recommendation under that category deals with budget account charges. Uh, the state of New Jersey has a very uh, detailed chart of accounts uh, in doing the audit of expenditures. We noted certain expenditures were not charged to the proper budget accounts. Uh, we just got to do a better job to make sure we code those expenses to the proper budget accounts. Uh, number three deals with the Title I grant program. Um, under Title I, which is one of our major grant programs we require to audit, um, there's time and effort reports that have to be uh, filled out uh, after the end of a five month interval by teachers uh, being charged to the program um, in doing the audit of Title I and verifying if those reports uh, were submitted by those teachers and staff. Um, the, there was a couple of them missing. Therefore, we just got to do a better job to make sure the time and effort reports are completed and retained on file for all the employees charged to the Title I grant. Um, item four deals uh, with extraordinary aid application. That's an application to receive aid for certain costs related to special education. Um, to be eligible, eligible to be uh, to receive those course students have to have in their IEPs an intensive related service. In doing the audit of the IEPs, we noted certain uh, students who were uh, requested for reimbursement as being eligible um, did not have those intensive related services in the application to make them eligible. So we have to do, uh, you know, review those uh, IEPs before we submit the application to the state for reimbursement. Under school purchasing program, we had two recommendations. Uh, New Jersey has uh, very stringent regulations regarding purchasing. Um, and it's an area that, you know, when you're doing the audit, you kind of concentrate on. Um, the first area is that uh, there were certain expenditures made or contracts awarded that should have been bid or appear should have been bid. And when we asked for the documentation, we were unable uh, to be provided with documentation to prove, to prove that public bids were awarded um, by the district. So uh, we got to do a better job that if someone goes over the bid threshold or before they go over the bid threshold, that we bid those, publicly bid those services or the purchase of those goods, um, and that we keep documentation on file to prove that uh, that procedure was completed. Uh, under item two, under school purchasing program, deals with contract and, and awards that don't require public advertising for bids. Um, these are state contracts. These are contracts that the state division of purchasing actually awards contracts for certain goods and services. And we're allowed to piggyback on that bid process and award contracts to those vendors, as well as certain cooperative purchasing agreements with other governmental entities, such as the Huntington County Education Services Commission and the uh, Ed Data uh, uh, Consortium. Um, even though we're not required to go out to bid for them, if those purchases and contract awards exceed the bid threshold, the, the award of those contracts and those purchases must be approved by the board first prior to those purchases uh, being made. Um, in addition, there are national uh, purchasing co-ops that require a whole set of procedures that are required by the district. And we have to, again, approve them by board resolution, the specific vendor, the specific co-op, and keep documentation on file to uh, document that they are uh, eligible state contract vendors or cooperative uh, vendors that were approved by the uh, respective cooperative. Under food, ser uh, food service program, uh, the district contracts with a food service management company um, they provide an operating statement on a monthly basis. That's the basis for which we pay them. It's a reimbursement contract. Um, in their contract, they have certain uh, 
guaranteed profits they must reach um, in reviewing that operating statement and comparing it to the district records. Um, the revenues that were on the operating statement and the amounts reported in the district records for food service sales were not in agreement. Um, we need to review that on a monthly basis and uh, reconcile that and determine why there are differences, uh, as well as the same with the expenses. There were certain expenses on the invoices that we paid the vendor food service management company, but they weren't on the operating statement. Neither one of these things are of large magnitude, but they are things that we should do uh, on an, a monthly basis as just part of normal uh, procedures in uh, reviewing bills for the food service and depositing monies for food service accounts. Uh, the last item, the last area is student body activities. Those are accounts uh, maintained at each individual school. Um, they are for student activities and student, or, uh, student organizations and clubs. Um, and we had three recommendations under there. Uh, number one was that pre-numbered receipt tickets be utilized for monies collected in all district student activity accounts. Uh, we receive money from, you know, from students as well as fundraising activities, uh, donations, um, and we are requesting as an internal control procedure that there be a pre-numbered receipt ticket to document and control the amounts of monies coming in, who they came from, what activity they're for, who, who brought them in and who, who uh, turned them over uh, to the treasurer, uh, what is made up of those monies, cash check, um, and what's the date that the monies were turned over. Uh, item two deals with deposits uh, at the high school, for the high school athletics and the varsity club accounts. Um, we noted gate receipts from uh, various sporting events were not being deposited timely. Uh, the rule of thumb is two, day, two business days after the event, the money should be in the bank. Um, all sporting events are cash money. Uh, they do do a ticket report, so we know how many tickets are sold, uh, the numbers of the tickets, um, but we need to deposit those fund, uh, monies uh, timely. The same with the varsity club, they're receiving donations. Uh, those things have to be deposited timely. The final item under there is uh, that we use uh, vouchers or, or check request forms for payments in the Fannie Hillers, the middle school and the high school varsity club and high school athletic account. Um, just like the district uses vouchers to pay their uh, bills, uh, a good control in the student activity accounts is to implement the same type of a document so that we know uh, that the purchase was approved, uh, what club it's for, um, and the supporting documentation is attached and approved, or usually it's either the treasurer approves them or the principal. Those are our findings for the 1920 uh, school year. Uh, I'm happy to report that, you know, last year we had 16 uh, recommendations. There are six repeated this year, but the administration really did a, a uh, a good job in going through last year's recommendation, trying to clean up as many as they could. Um, and I have full confidence that they will uh, do the same thing uh, next year of the recommendations and reporting in this year's report. Uh, if there's any um, questions, comments, I'm here to answer. Any questions from the trustees? No. no. Mr. Bliss, thank you very much. The board will be taking action on the corrective action plan and we will reach out to you tomorrow morning. Okay, thank you and good night, everyone. Good night. Uh, thank you. Superintendent report? Sure. Okay, so hello again. On my way to work this morning, 
I followed my usual path down the local streets of Bergen County and saw many happy children either waiting at bus stops or walking to school, as has been the case since September. For the first time since March of last year, I saw the children of Hackensack walking to school, and to be honest, I could not be happier. You see, it has been very difficult watching the students from neighboring communities go to school while ours remain home. And while I recognize that not every family wants to send their children to school, there are a significant number of families that want and need their children to be in school. Let's face it, remote learning does not work well for everyone. For many of our kids, being in school is what they need. And giving kids what they need to succeed is what equity is all about. I'm extremely happy that we can finally provide that for them. From what I can tell from the parents and staff members that I spoke to today, they are all happy too. In a recent briefing, Governor Murphy said, across to our state, the majority of our schools remain open for in-person instruction in some capacity. We remain mindful that this pandemic is a very challenging and fluid situation. And we remain grateful to everyone, our families, our educators, our school leaders, who continue to rise to meet this challenge. I echo his sentiments because I know that you are up to this challenge. While the concerns of COVID-19 are real, we can remain open safely if we all follow the health and safety protocols in place. This requires a team effort. Will there be sporadic school closures? Possibly, but that could happen even if we were in the yellow moderate risk or green low risk categories. Recently, there has been some uh, misinformation being spread that indicates that Bergen County is in the red, very high risk category. That simply is not the case according to the New Jersey Department of Health. If you review the most recent COVID-19 activity level reports published by the New Jersey Department of Health, you'll note that our region is still in the orange high risk category. Further, the last report actually shows a downward trend in all three categories that the New Jersey Department of Health uses to apply a COVID-19 activity level index score for our region, also known as the Cali score. Currently, the entire state has a Cali score of three, which indicates orange high risk. In closing, let's work together to keep our schools open. Instead of focusing on why schools, why reopening schools can't work, I ask you to focus on why it can. I have faith in our staff and students to make this work. Why? Because their actions in my short time here have shown me nothing different. Moving on. Last Thursday evening, we held our first strategic planning meeting. And in my humble opinion, it was a huge success. The participants were engaged and gave us very valuable feedback. Our next meeting is scheduled for February 25th at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. Please visit our district website for additional information. I hope you will be able to join us in creating the future for Hackensack Public Schools. Now on to the enrollment report. Currently, there are 5,384 students in our schools. With regards to our HIV investigations, we had four total cases. Um, excuse me a second. We had one that fit the definition of HIV at the middle school and one at Jackson Avenue School, the middle school, and the high school that did not meet the definition of HIV. That concludes my report. Mr. Powell, at this time, we should take a vote on the affirmation of the HIV report. Mm -hmm. Be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education, upon review and consideration of the results of the HIV investigation reported to the board during its last meeting, affirms the superintendent's determination on the HIV investigation. Is there a motion to that effect? Moved by Mr. Powell, seconded by Mr. Goodman. On the roll call, Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Nolly? Yes. Mr. Goodman? Yes. Ms. Lassane? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Velez? Yes. Mr. James Vickery? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. The motion carries. <clears throat> At this time, we're going into public comments, correct, Mr. Powell? Yes. 
and I would, I will not read the whole three page <laughs> public comment criteria because we've, we've seen this a couple of times before now, but I will ask um, the board to pass a, pass a resolution to that effect. Move by Mr. James Vickery. Second. Mr. Rodriguez. Mr. Nolly, you came in a sec, a quarter of a second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Uh, we did give an opportunity to the members of the public to make comments on our public comments website. I have two comments which I will read to you. The first comment was from Joseph Wolverton. He's a resident of Hackensack, New Jersey, to whom it may concern. It is a danger to the community to keep the schools open until the community has an opportunity to be vaccinated. We are only in phase 1A distribution of the vaccine and most teachers and frontline workers are in the phase 1B category. Please wait until the phase 1B vaccines are available to bring the students back into the schools. Below, please find evidence as to what are concerning factors in making this decision. Health Commissioner Judy Persicelli said New Jersey recently reported two lab confirmed cases of the UK COVID variant B117. One was an asymptomatic child from North Jersey who tested positive in New York and the other was an Ocean County man in his 60s with no travel history or clear exposure. The BBC reports that scientists in the UK said they believe the variant is 70% more contagious than previously identified strains. They also believe it is 30% more deadly. The vaccines being given now are thought to be effective against the variant, officials have said, so we should be working to get the teachers and staff vaccinated instead of unnecessarily risking their lives and the community at large. Thank you for your time. The second public comment came from Anthony Ziza of Maple Hill Drive, Hackensack. I write today as a teacher and parent in this district like all teachers and parents, I want students in classrooms, but the schools remain unsafe. Students return today, we could expect within the next few weeks. Let me read that again. Students return today. We can expect within the next few weeks, if not earlier, for students and staff to become sick. I want to be clear. This Board of Education knows their plan is unsafe. They are pushing forward in defiance of the science. They have watched all the schools they mentioned last week shut down and go full remote because of outbreaks. So let there be no confusion. Every person who becomes sick, every person who suffers potentially long-term and debilitating sy symptoms, and anyone who heaven forfend dies from COVID, I read that literally, caught in Hackensack Public Schools facilities, died because of your decision to, in the callous words of our board president, give it a shot without regards to the consequences. The public should not be gaslit that they couldn't predict the outcome of their decision. The HEA, parents and health officials have been screaming it since the announcement of this reckless plan. We will re remember your complicity in the outcome. Now we could open up to public comments, Mr. Sparrow. <clears throat> Hello? Hi, ready to begin? Yep. Okay, my name is Patricia Shepard, social worker at Hackensack High School Child Study Team. The board decided that students should come back to in-person instruction to satisfy the social emotional learning needs of students. Social emotional learning appears to have become the administration's buzz phrase to justify its decisions, jeopardizing the health of its staff and students during an expanding pandemic and new variant. 
Social Emotional Learning, or SEL, seeks to integrate academics with social emotional health. So SEL sources outline its core competencies as self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, social awareness, and relationship skills. It's misguided to think that returning to school to socialize with peers and teachers fulfills the promotion of SEL. Socializing is not social-emotional learning. Our guidance counselors, social workers, and psychologists are very aware of the social-emotional health needs of our students and how this pandemic has affected them and their families. We are continually monitoring and dealing with means of promoting their well-being, but we are also aware that returning to school at this time will not address social emotional health and its broader concerns. Speaking for the high school, the day may you know, look like this. Masks on from 8.15 to 12.45. No access to the bathroom during class time. No food in the classroom. No, no eating until 12.45 dismissal. Maintaining six feet distance or more from peers and staff behind three-sided shields. No circulating about the room. No congregating with peers before, during, or after school or between periods. No walk-ins to guidance and child study team offices. The offices are too small to maintain six feet of distance, and most of them have no windows and have poor ventilation. So how does this scenario set the scene for SEL? Self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, social awareness, relationship skills. It doesn't. To address the social emotional health of our kids and the increased demand created by the pandemic, the district needs to hire more mental health support. We lack the therapeutic, psychiatric, and environmental resources to manage demand. The district counseling staff, in addition to performing the multitude of non-counseling duties, are limited to school-based counseling. To illustrate, think of the military field doctor who patches up the soldier so she can return to the battlefield. No time for medical history, x-rays to assess other injuries, and prescribe PT. Likewise, school-based counseling assesses the immediate situation and sends the school student back to class patched up with concrete skills to get through the rest of the day. To truly address the social-emotional health of our students, you need to hire staff whose sole function is to attend the social-emotional well-being of our kids. At the very least, the district needs to initiate outreach to the community, mental health agencies, and faith-based organizations to create partnerships to secure and deliver services, resource, and support to our population. So although returning to school will get students out of the house and into some kind of routine two half days a week, the impact on social emotional health is negligible. Putting so many people at risk of infection and residual complications like death is a high price to pay for such negligible returns. Thank you. in the queue. <clears throat> well, Elliot. You're muted. Restaurant. Yes. Thank you. Good evening. I see that not everyone was able to attend your in-person session tonight. Perhaps you have good reasons that I do not need to know. But it was Donna West. Hello? Can you give your name, please? I'm so sorry. Donna West, Hackensack Education Association President, uh, teacher at Nellie K. Parker School and Hackensack resident. Good evening again. I see that not everyone was able to attend your in-person session tonight. Perhaps you have good reasons that I do not need to know, but it would seem to be hypocritical at best for trustees who ultimately made the decision to send my members, our part-time staff, our students, and me back into school buildings today. I will tell you, it was great to see the kids. Some were smiling, some were complaining, having been forced to go to school today. Some were so eager to come to school, they showed up on the wrong day. But we also had those who failed the screener or families who blatantly lied so the kids could attend. 
Thank God for fast acting staff who knew the students and families because as much as several of you have called us lazy, unconcerned and overpaid, many of us actually do care. We do our jobs and we're proud to work in Hackensack. Today, several of the schools I believe reported less than 100 total students in attendance. So where's the 50% of the family survey that wanted their kids back in school? Better yet, where are your kids board members and central office leadership? Are they in school? Are they attending in person? Let me close with this. I know the state has loosened the guidelines and leaves the decisions to remain open or to close with the district leadership. And I know we as staff have vehemently opposed your decision to send us back now with high COVID infection numbers, because as Mr. Sanchez just said, high risk, I'm thinking still indicates risk, correct? There's also a new strain of the virus in our own state, Bergen County and Hackensack especially reporting numbers that are high and little to no staff and students having been vaccinated. But as President Powell said at the last meeting, hey, let's see what happens. If it doesn't work, we'll try plan B. I believe that's a direct quote, but I'll apologize if it's not. But I do hope it works. And if it works, it will because of the extreme sacrifice of the teachers and staff that you have long ignored and dismissed. And I hope it works because then I won't have to watch my friends, my colleagues, and our students get sick or even die or hear them tell of their loved ones who died. Thank you. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Hi, uh, my name is Stephen Thompson. I'm a lifelong Hackensack resident. I'm an alum. I'm an educator in a neighboring town. Uh, I'd like to first start by thanking the board uh, for the opportunity to participate in the strategic planning meeting that took place last week. Uh, my family and I all attended. It was very productive. It was open. Uh, it was a conversation that I think needed to be had. Voices are being heard from all corners of our community, and I truly sincerely hope that the board is listening to the concerns and the issues that are being raised at this meeting. Uh, I think it was by far the most productive meeting I've been a part of in a very, very long time. Uh, second, I wasn't planning on saying this tonight, uh, but when the superintendent made a statement this evening that all of the staff he spoke to today was in favor of reopening and that they were happy about it, I, I have to even imagine that he didn't speak to very many people or that he spoke to a very select group that he was already aware of the answers. I am well aware of dozens, if not hundreds of teachers that attended a meeting just in the last few days expressing their concern, their fright, their worry over their students, their lives and their families' lives. And to make a statement saying that the entire staff supports this implies that they're complicit in anything that happens going forward. And I'd like to make it clear as a relative and a member of the community that the entire staff does not support reentering and they are not complicit in anything that may happen to anyone due to this incredibly reckless decision. Finally, what I was actually calling about tonight, I did notice on the, uh, the agenda that coaches were being approved tonight for winter sports. Um, and as I was going through it, I did notice that men's and women's swimming was not being approved despite the fact that they had been approved by NJSIAA to return to practice. So I was just curious if that's an oversight or if that's a decision that the board has made to not move forward with that particular sport. Thank you again and have a good evening. Born here. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Hi, Kasim Gaines, Hackensack High School teacher, Hackensack resident. Um, I just wanted to echo some of the sentiments of people that called earlier. Um, a couple of meetings ago, when 
the board was in person and then trustee Francis Kajelja was home, I did comment on the hypocrisy that Ms. Kajelja was able to stay home while teachers were being required to go into the building without being given a choice. Um, Vice President James Vickery uh, agreed with that sentiment and said that if teachers are being required to go in and do their jobs, trustees should be in as well. And so I do not know the reasons why Mr. Coleman and Mr. Velez are home, but um, I think it's a slap in the face to everyone who is an adult who works in this district who was not given a choice as to whether or not they can do what they need to do for their families to protect themselves and be safe and still be able to do their jobs. Um, I also wanted to just comment on the fact that it isn't lost on me that the majority of the board does not have any direct connections to anyone who is currently in our schools. Um, President Powell, Trustee Denully, Trustee Lassane, Trustee Goodman, Trustee Velez do not have any children currently in the schools. As far as I know, are not related to any staff members, do not have any practical skin in the game in terms of people who are literally putting their lives on the line to go in and educate the children of this community. And I think that it's dangerous, frankly, when the majority of the board is in that <laughs> position to require for people to go in. I do wanna also comment that Ms. Denully's school, she's a dean in a, in a school, a charter school, is actually closed until I believe March 26th. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I'm curious as to what, what the factors are that are so different about that school as opposed to Hackensack and our students. Um, I'm curious as to whether Mr. Coleman, Mr. Oates, Mr. James Vickery, and Mr. Rodriguez are sending their children to our schools right now. Um, but the thing that I really wanted to say is there was an important number that was left out of Mr. Sanchez's report, and that's 109. And that's the number of students who have tested positive and reported to the school since September, 109. Now keep in mind, that's while the schools were closed. And so that number is only going to increase. And that's a number that requires people to report to a school where they weren't even attending in person. They chose to report. So, you know, the question as to whether or not we can open is not really the question. It's whether or not we should, because those are 109 children who perhaps don't have health care, perhaps their families don't have health care, perhaps they're putting people's lives at risk. And I think that one child is too many. Vaccinations are coming soon. We just need to wait a little bit longer. It's not worth the risk right now. One with you. Good evening, um, Patricia Burleson, Hackensack teacher. Um, throughout my career here in Hackensack, I felt confident in most decisions made by the board, and I went about the business of doing what I love to do, teaching third graders. But I'm compelled again to call to ask why we would open our schools when COVID cases in Bergen County, and specifically Hackensack, are so high. You stated that orange is high risk. Would any of us recommend that our students engage in any high risk behaviors? When your last meeting was held, you had two board members say outright that they did not think we should return. With the exception of our board president and superintendent, I did not get the impression that the other board members were terribly secure in this decision. When you say we have to try, it feels like it's for the sake of optics. It feels like if you want us to go in there and in the very likely event we shut down, you can say we tried, but at what cost? A few cases in the system, a few cases translates to cases in the community. I say we have to try to. We have to see this through, which is remaining at home until it's safe. I understand you have a vocal group of parents who want this, and I understand that having children out of school is incredible hardship. And my parents, if you hear me tonight, I think you know that I want to be in school. We had a parent call into our Zoom in tears, our back to school Zoom, her children, she wanted to wish us good luck, but her children will be learning virtually. And I know there are parents who do not feel this is safe to return, and I hope that they will call in tonight. I know we started today. I could not start today because I'm quarantined until Wednesday. 
this phone call might be fruitless, but parents should know that while we're all telling students we can't wait to see them, because of course we love them and what else would we say to them? We do not feel safe. I hope that you will protect us all, the teachers in this district and the families in this community by waiting for teachers to be, get vaccinations as well as waiting for lower numbers of cases. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Michelle Tavares. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, Hackensack resident Michelle Tavares. I'm calling in today because of a few things. First off, um, I'm a huge supporter of the board. You guys always have my support, but President Powell, I was so upset about the way you just said that we can simply say, I told you so, if this doesn't work out at our last meeting. That's such an insult. We're talking about the health and well-being of students and teachers. I told you so. It's very insulting. Um, with that being said, um, I want my kids back in those buildings more than anything. But I want it to be safe and I want it to be at the best time. And I just don't feel it's the best time. I get where your intention is. I understand it. But we literally have parents lying about these trackers and sending our, their kids to school and then telling the kids, why did you tell them the truth? I don't understand how this could possibly be okay. And I know this happened because I heard it firsthand from parents that it actually went down with. So please, I just don't understand why we are considering this. I get we want our kids back in school. I want my kid back in school too. Now is just not the time and I'm urging you to think about that and I get we already started and I pray for our teachers, our staff members, and our students that they all stay healthy and safe. But seriously, I told you so was just in bad form. Thank you. Hi, uh, this is Teresa Jones. I am a teacher at the Hackensack Middle School. I teach fifth grade science and I'm also a Hackensack resident. Um, I'm calling because um, I, with all due respect, Mr. Sanchez, I don't think you talk to anybody at the middle school about being happy to be back in the building. Um, it is not safe to be there. Um, and mostly it comes down to Today, I can tell you for a fact, there were at least two kids at Hackensack Middle School who, from different families who came into the school, despite being ineligible to attend in person because one child had been out of the country for, since before Christmas and returned over the weekend. Another student had been in another state down south and just came back over the weekend. Both families filled out the COVID screener saying that they um, were fine to return. They were admitted to the building. The one student, I was the one who actually figured it out because I, the child lives down the street from me and I met her for the first time over the weekend and she had told me she just came back. So if parents are going to lie on the uh, COVID screener and we can't trust that, the fact that this is putting myself, my colleagues, my students, my students' families' lives in jeopardy because somebody might come in who's more likely to have a, a variation of the virus that's maybe not here yet and pass it on to others, even if they're asymptomatic, um, I think that's a, beyond irresponsible of all of us. Um, so the questions I have, uh, just three. What consequences are there, if any, for parents who intentionally lie on the daily screener and send their kids to school? Uh, the, the girl who was out of the country, I'm aware that she was picked up after third period. So that leads me to my second question. All the other kids and the teachers where this little girl sat for half the school day today, should they now be quarantining as well? Um, and how do we know? 
uh, or should they stay home until they're tested and have a negative test because they have all potentially been exposed now on our first day. And finally, um, I'd like to know, this is a little bit separate, what is the exact protocol for who should be wiping down the desks in between transitions of kids? Because I have four groups of kids who come into my room each day and in between, I, I, there's sanitizer, but there's no direction. I, am I supposed to do it? Are the kids supposed to do it? I, I've been told several times that it's up to each teacher, but that doesn't seem to be um, a stringent protocol. And I, and I believe that that's part of what the plan should have is who's doing those kind of things. It's not the custodians. They only uh, disinfect once a night is my understanding. Uh, thank you. Sorry, hello, can you hear me? Great, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Erin Dietz Nemec. I am a special educator at the Hackensack Middle School. Um, I really basically just have one very uh, simple question for Mr. Sanchez. Um, I just want to know that now that we, the teachers and the children, um, are back in the buildings, and my building in particular will have hundreds of kids on one day, um, is the central office now open to visitors? If a parent wanted to come in and speak um, to you or somebody else in the office, are you now open to people as we are now open to hundreds of exposures? That's basically it. So it's not a rhetorical question. It's a question that could be answered and I do ask it respectfully. So thank you. That's it. Well, normally we'll wait until the end to answer questions, but I mean, I'll answer that one. That's easy enough. Um, we've always been open. It just has to be by appointment. We've never been shut down to the public. So I don't know where that misinformation is. Hi, you're on. Hi, <clears throat> my name's Gene Irving. Um, I just have a quick comment, and I have two kids that are in the Hackensack School Public Hackensack Public School System. Um, I'm a resident of Hackensack. My wife and I are very active in the community, um, and we support the Hackensack School teachers 1,000%. Always have, always will. I want to make this clear. I want this to be on the record that I find the Hackensack School Board grossly incompetent, right? At best, okay? At best, grossly incompetent. It's unfortunate <clears throat> that this level of commitment is way above your head, all right? Let me just be clear about that, all right? <clears throat> I understand why you're trying to get the kids back in school, but there's no rush to do it. There's no necessary reason to put our kids in jeopardy, to put the teachers in jeopardy, or put parents in jeopardy especially when uh, cases are spiking, right? We do not need to send our kids back to school, right? Let me just repeat that so everyone understands clearly what I'm saying. We do not need to send our kids back to school, right? And that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Uh, good evening, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear us? Yes, I can, can you hear me? Go ahead. 
Uh, my name is Tony Jackson from Hackensack. Um, I hope that you can hear me. I didn't hear anyone say that they could hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to just start off by saying um, I had a, um, a parent come by and stay a safe distance away the other morning. Um, this is Alicia Rosa. She said it was okay if I said her name, um, whose child went to Fairmount. Uh, my wife was her son's teacher, and she was just gushing in her support of the teachers. And she was telling us that she agreed with how we felt. Um, we feel the same as many of our colleagues do, and we echo the fact that it is, um, that it's unnecessary right now for us to be back in the building. Not only is it unnecessary, but it is, um, it is dangerous. And on a night when we are honoring teachers and saying that these are amazing people, we're so thankful for what they've done, we, we praise them. It is disingenuous to say that we love them, we love our educators and, and, and you honor them, but to refuse to listen to us and to refuse to consider our concerns and to refuse to acknowledge our fears and to refuse to, to, refuse to respect the knowledge that we have about what's happening right now. I think in terms of SEL, I, I, I'm so thankful for the person who called in, my colleague who called in and, and spoke about that. I think if you really cared about the SEL of these students, the social emotional well-being of these students, then we would be talking about changing homework practices. We'd be talking about changing grading practices. Why are students receiving Fs right now? That's something that, is, that has not been discussed at all but that is something that is, is affecting students throughout this district and has them feeling some kind of way because they feel like they are being judged based on those grades, which are still the, the same archaic grading practices that were going on for, for years and that were happening pre-pandemic. But now let's just get them back into the building and make sure that, you know, in this uncomfortable situation, we can say that things are back to normal. It can appear that things are back to normal. I know that things are not back to normal. I don't feel respected. I don't feel listened to. I don't feel supported. And I hope that that changes. Thank you. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. Great. My name is Heather Bennett Corey. I am a resident of Hackensack, and I have a daughter who is in the eighth grade at the middle school, and she has something that she would like to say. Hi. Um, even though I'm virtual for this marching period, I felt really compelled to say something. Going into this, I was pretty indifferent. But the more I listen and apprehend what others are saying, I must say I'm very upset. Disappointed, but not surprised. It has been made clear that many of you have small regards for us, especially with the Francisco Delta situation. I must say I'm appalled at the union's disregard for us students' safety. Not only our safety, but everyone involved with our public schools. Teachers have made it very clear that, they, that many of them do not want anything to do with going into school, yet that's been disregarded and ignored. I must say I'm very nervous for some of my friends who are going into the building for their safety and our teachers who I've come to like very dearly. I must say I'm very disappointed, but although I'm not very surprised. Thanks. Just so you know, she's been debating whether or not to say something for the last two to three school board meetings and I'm very proud of her for gaining her confidence to be able to do so. And I also would just like to make sure it's understood that she just came up to me and said she wants to do this. There was no prompting from me whatsoever. Um, as a parent, I have gone back and forth this entire year trying to decide what was going to be best for my family. And I say this to say I have no judgment against anybody who makes the decision that they feel is right for their family. However, I have a lot of friends who are teachers in this district, and I feel that it's unfair that they don't have that same right that I have as a parent. Both of us have asthma. Both of us have other factors, including a very, very close person to us who recently died from COVID. The teachers need to be heard with this. Their wants, their desires, their needs need to be put into consideration 
and need to be factored in. All of the towns and cities that everybody has been talking about, Fairlawn, et cetera, et cetera, they've all shut down. TNEC has is not sending in their, I believe it's middle school and high school until February. The younger kids are going in. And yes, it's different between the elementary and the older students. That's a completely, but this is just not right. Orange means high risk. We would not send our kids into a high risk situation any other time. And for this decision to be forced upon these teachers is not good. I'm also concerned, you know, with my daughter's virtual learning. So now that the teachers are in school, they're gonna have masks on. Are they going to be understood? Is it gonna be easier or more difficult for my daughter being online to understand and to hear what's being said? Same thing with the kids that are in the classroom. I just think this is a very, very poor decision that is being made on behalf of the families and on behalf of the teachers. Thank you. That's it. Okay, public session is uh, public comments is now closed. Thank you. Uh, we'll now go into our resolutions. So, <clears throat> everyone, I, I present to you um, the personnel section um, A1, A through B2. Can I have it's a actually a, it's not numbered correctly. It's actually A1, A to M. <laughs> okay, what, yes, what you said, yes, A1 to M. Is there a second? Yes, second. Seconded by Mr. Powell. Mm -hmm. On the roll call, Mr. Goodman. I vote yes to all except for A1. No to A1. Ms. Lasan? Um, I vote um, yes to all except for A1, no for A1. Mr. Rodriguez? Uh, yes for all, no for A1. Mr. Velez? Yes to all, no to A1. James Vickery? Yes to all, no for A1. Mr. Powell? Yes to all, no to A1. Did I cover everybody? I'm sorry. That's, I'm sorry, Ms. Dinelli. Ms. Dinelli? Yes to all, no to A1. All the motions carry except for A1. Could you do policy for me, please? Policy? Could you do policy for me, please? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm Mikey. I can do policy. <laughs> I'm sorry. There we go. Yeah. Did I didn't realize. Coleman, excuse me. Did Mr. Coleman did Mr. vote on Coleman personnel? Vote? No. You didn't vote. I did not. And uh, for the record, I, I vote uh, yes on all, but no on A1. I remember you were, <laughs> sorry. And uh, moving on to policy. Uh, I'll request a motion for approval of uh, resolution B1 and B2. Is there a second on policy, Mr. Goodman? Oh, sure. A second. <laughs> Recognize Mr. Goodman or Mr. Velez? Mr. Velez is the first one. <laughs> Mr. Velez seconded. Any discussion on policy? On the policy, B2, B, there's none on B2, so B1, so there's only the second reading on B2. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Nully? Yes. Mr. Goodman? Yes. Ms. Lassane? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. 
Mr. Velez? Yes. Mr. James Vickery? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Motions carry. Curriculum. Actually, no, it was curriculum, I'm sorry. Mr. Oates is now. <laughs> <laughs> Coleman, do you want to do it? Or? <laughs> you can do it, Mr. Nelly. Mm -hmm. um, if you like. No, you can. All right. Well, I'd... I move approval for resolution C1 through C16. A second. Seconded by Mr. James Vickery. If there's no discussion on the roll call, Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Nelly? Yes. Mr. Goodman? Yes. Ms. Lassane? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Velez? Yes. Mr. James Vickery? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Motions carry. Okay, on the finance resolution uh, D1 through D13, I would like to make a comment about D7 and thank you to, uh, and make a thank you to All American Ford uh, for their donation of 4,500 4, face masks at an approximate value of $1,845. We, uh, we thank our local vendors for participating in, uh, in helping the district. Uh, I also would like to make a general comment um, uh, about Ms. Zeno uh, in terms of uh, uh, feeling very, very comfortable with her being our board administrator uh, and secretary because she is super competent with respect to paying attention to all of the numbers. So I bring to the, I bring to the resolution tonight items D1 through D13. Seconded by Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Goodman. On the roll, on the roll call, Mr. Coleman. Yes. Mr. Nelly. Yes. Mr. Goodman. Yes. Ms. Hussain. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mr. Velez. Yes. Mr. James Vickery. Yes. Mr. Powell. Yes. Motion carries. Building and grounds. So thank you. Um, I wanted to uh, go over some quickly because this is the um, a part that we have a lot of really exciting things that are on the horizon that are happening that we are putting into motion and there are a lot of things that are already in motion and I want to draw attention to those. Um, so quickly um, you'll see uh, the, the first E1 just our standard policy E2. Um, we met all the criteria in all of the areas for the annual health and safety evaluation. Um, the which is a standard thing that happens every year. Um, E3 was some repairs that had to um, happen at, for the high school foundation. Um, let me jump down to E5. Um, so, so basically, you're going to see several um, projects that are starting that I am so excited about to be able to to say that we are are able to do. Um, one. You'll see, um, and, and these fees have to do with all of the, the, the um, architecture fees that have to happen. Um, we have a lot of really old buildings and there are a lot of intense things that we're fixing to work on. So um, it's all a requirement for that. Uh, one, we have to do some window replacement at uh, Hillers. Um, that is just absolutely necessary. Um, we're gonna do, um, some bathroom renovations at Fairmount, bathroom renovations at Jackson Elementary. Um, and then this is, I mean, bathrooms are exciting, don't get me wrong, but this is where it's getting good. Um, at two schools, at Jackson Elementary and at Fairmount, we are starting to push forward with um, our, um, a piece of our ADA compliance. And we are going to start working on um, our projects to put elevators in both of those buildings so that our students, teachers, and parents uh, can have full access to the buildings. <coughs> and, then, um, and then in e E10, you will see a $6,500 piece that um, th what this is, is it is verifying. Um, so they have created this amazing plan for solar that um, as we move forward in our ESIP plan, which we've talked about, um, 
unfortunately other things kind of overshadow that at times, but we are moving forward with um, millions of dollars worth of projects that um, will be coming soon. Um, the, they are literally working at breakneck speed in our Dora and Mr. Sanchez, Ms. Lino and Mr. Sanchez um, on all the requirements that have to happen. But this is, it has to have a third party kind of review of the solar plan. Um, we'll have in on top of many of our buildings and in the high school uh, parking lot, the, the solar <coughs> carport. Um, and that will be an instant savings of about 208 plus thousand dollars a year um, that we that will generate the other thing uh, projects in our district and savings um, and then the last e11 and e12 are both things that um, are work that had to be done um, at the middle school facade um, for some and then some masonry stuff uh, so that is E1 through E12 to the board. Um, make a motion. I would be excitedly second that. Anybody have any questions? I would like to add, if, as you heard the auditor say earlier, we have a healthy capital projects fund, and that's what's enabling us to co continue and go forward with these projects. Yeah, so, and, and just a quick note, actually, I'll say that in my closing comments. Go ahead. Let's take a roll call. On the roll call, Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Nully? Yes. Mr. Goodman? Yes. Ms. Lassane? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Velez? Yes. Mr. James Vickery? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Motion's carried. Okay, we the motion completed. Yes, sir. We're now over the board comments. Wants to take it away? Can I go while it's fresh in my mind? Yes. <laughs> so, so I want to go first so I can uh, while it's fresh in my mind. So, a lot of the projects that I just referred to, um, we um, about how sixteen million dollars worth of projects for the ESIP that we're, we're looking at. Around seventeen. Around seventeen million dollars worth of projects um, that will include heating and air. Um, that will include include about 30 different components of our district that will help us to be able to um, be a more energy efficient, but also just projects that we have needed for many, many years. So we are in a space where we are able to, um, we, with that, you work from the savings and we will bond. That will not come from our taxpayer dollars, which um, is something that is uh, huge to me. Also, um, as far as some of our other, like Ms. Zeno said, we have uh, several million dollars that are intentionally because we have now um, Ms. Mr. Sanchez and Ms. Zeno along with our Buildings and Grounds Committee, we have strategically worked on creating a long-term plan and having the money to back that up in a way that does not, um, we are using the money that we have so that we don't have to ask for additional money from the taxpayers. And um, so I think that these are all really exciting things that we need to be um, proud of and continue to um, look as we, as we go forward, just keep your eye out on what's happening. Um, quickly, I wanna say uh, a thank you to Gabby, uh, Heather, Corey Bennett, or Bennett, Corey, one or the other, daughter who called in. That takes a lot of courage um, especially for uh, a, a middle school person. And so um, I always encourage our students to uh, call in. That is why we do what we do is for you. And so when we get to hear your voices, it is uh, incredibly impactful. Uh, and I've, Mr. Oates is not here. He had something very important that he had to do. He hated that he could not be here. I would love to give some weird sports analogy. That's not my forte, so I'm not going to do that, but I will end by saying go Comets. Good evening, everyone. First, I would like to welcome uh, Zani Lusain to the board. Uh, and uh, and I, I do hope that everyone is staying safe and healthy. Uh, I do also want to acknowledge uh, Superintendent Sanchez, all of our school administrators, the BA, uh, as well as Matthew Lee from the NJSBA for participating in the first strategic planning session last week. 
I found that that session was really fantastic. Uh, uh, Adrian, thank you very much for technologically enabling all of us to move in and out of Zoom rooms seamlessly. We were all uh, carefully monitored so that no one over, you know, the timing worked out really well. It was, uh, there was a lot of participation. There were parents, teachers, Students, it was a really, really great session. And I think strategic planning for the district, when it happens the way it happened the other night, is so beneficial. So I, I am really thrilled that, uh, that I was a part of that and, and will continue to do that. Um, I, you know, I, I, I want everyone, I, I want to thank uh, Sitapan Sorowich for the student report. Uh, and, uh, and a, a huge congratulations to all of our governors, educators of the of the year. Uh, it's a really great accomplishment. It uh, it speaks a lot about you guys, and and it also speaks really a lot about your administrators in the building. Who uh, I, I know there were many choices, uh, and and you guys, uh, the eleven of you, came ahead of uh, of everyone else. That doesn't diminish anyone else. But it, it certainly acknowledges how special all of you are. So I wish you congratulations. Um, I, I uh, acknowledge everyone's comments. I do appreciate the fact that you, that you call in tonight and express concern about reopening the district. I support, fully support Superintendent Sanchez. Uh, I, uh, but I do appreciate everyone having a, having a comment to make because everyone needs to be involved. Uh, so I wish everyone safety. Uh, and uh, and stay health stay healthy. Wear your masks and and practice all the right social practices to stay healthy. So I would like to um, acknowledge some of the curriculum resolutions. Um, the one that C five and C ten, the webinars and workshops that are for our Spanish speaking parents. I just wanna celebrate the fact that our district is willing to provide um, webinars for our Spanish speaking parents, as well as the C8 and C9, which were agreements with sensational kids to provide educators self-care workshops, which is really important at this time, and mindfulness in the classroom to elementary teachers and a video library of mindfulness activities for our students and for our teachers. Also C15, which is SAP, the Suspension Alternative Program. I was so excited to see that, um, especially as we are not suspending our kids or trying to do it much less and not sending our kids home um, on out of school suspension, but we're addressing their emotional, behavioral and academic functioning through that SAP program. So I'm really excited about that. I also wanted to take the opportunity to pay homage to the life and legacy of Mr. Eugene Marshall Sr., who was a civil rights activist. He was a community servant. He was the father of one of our educators, Gwenny Burke, and he will be greatly missed. And I didn't want to miss the opportunity to celebrate his life, as well as congratulate our Governor's Educators of the Year and our Educational <laughs> Support Professionals of the Year. I just want to say, you know, Thank you for all that you guys are doing. I pray that you guys that will be safe um, as you come out to the schools. And I do wanna address the fact that I am going into my building in Newark, New Jersey, which is in the red. I go in four days throughout the week and one of those days are for cleaning. And so we are preparing to bring our scholars back into the building and our teachers are about to return. So I want you to know that I am out there as well, um, trying to pave the way for our scholars to um, come back in the building. And I am doing everything that I can to stay safe, and I hope that you're doing the same. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thanks, Mr. Powell. <clears throat> I, uh, I had some notes, and I'm just kind of, first of all, I want to uh, thank the uh, student report. I want to thank Gabby for her letter. I know how tough it was to share, um, and it is very impactful. As as um, Trustee Victory said, uh, it's always I, I want to say I always listen to your emails, your calls, your comments. When I see people on the street, uh, 
text messages and calls. It's never fruitless or hopeless or insignificant to, to speak out and call. Uh, I don't want anybody to ever feel that because it's, it's not, I do. Everything that you guys share with me, it resonates and it affects me and I, and I, I do take it into consideration. I, I feel very hurt by all the, 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 the um, accusations of not supporting the teachers. Um, that's, it's, it's, that's not the case at all. You know, we have a responsibility to not only teachers, but parents and students as well. It's, it's tough to be here, um, but I do, I do listen, we do listen. Um, I, just, I wanna end in a positive note. I do wanna congratulate um, all the awesome educators that we, we have and that we spoke about um, today. Um, and that, that's all I have today, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to reiterate, uh, welcome to Trustee Zoni Lazane. Uh, I want to thank the uh, student report. It was very impressive. I want to congratulate the teachers and paraprofessionals who are honored tonight. Uh, I'm very heartened by the uh, report specific to the capital budget. Uh, there's absolutely no excuse for this district to have any building that's non-ADA compliant. So I look forward to those changes. Um, I think I've made my opinion known in the past, but I think all of our teachers need to be vaccinated uh, before there's in-person education. And I think we need to make every effort as a board, um, or perhaps even the teachers union to make sure that the teachers are given that top priority for receiving the vaccinations, similar to police and firefighters and uh, other governmental employees, because it is a very high priority for them to get vaccinated. Uh, I wanna say to uh, Ms. Patricia Shepard, uh, that was, uh, very educational. I learned a lot about what she said during her public comments. And uh, I hope that we can continue and move forward. And once we uh, can get back to a, a post pandemic life that we can get back to the business of governing, which is the job of a school board, uh, not necessarily making the decisions as to whether or not schools are open or closed. And uh, we can uh, resume our goal of having Hackensack as a world-class education. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Trustee Vallette. Yes, good evening, everyone. First of all, I just want to congratulate all the teachers and paraprofessionals that were honored and celebrated tonight. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for your dedication to, to our school community. Not just your school community, but our entire Hackensack school community. I was clearly, as it was clearly articulated by your administrators. Thank you for that, because you're setting the tone. You're setting an example for our students. You're setting an example for all of us that are serving our school community. Thank you. Thank you to Adrian for making this uh, Zoom possible so that I could attend. Uh, just want to say thank you, Superintendent Sanchez, for your hard work and your commitment to our kids. I know that at times we are on the receiving end, especially you are on the receiving end of uh, uh, not so nice comments, but we are going to continue to push forward to ensure that our kids, our teachers are all safe and that we continue to learn. Thank you and have a great evening, everyone. Thank you, Trustee. Trustee Lassane, Sean. I uh, just like to thank the board uh, for your supporting confidence for um, having me join. Uh, Superintendent uh, Sanchez, thank you so much for your support. Um, BA um, Dorazino, I'd like to thank you for all the transition that I had to go through in order to move forward uh, to where I am today. And um, it's just really heartwarming to be a part of the um, community. And I hear all these sentiments, the heartaches, uh, coming from all different aspects and all different angles. And all we want is the best for everyone's interest, uh, for ourselves, 
for the children, for the teachers. Uh, so um, I'm proud to be a part of this body of, of Board of Trustees and hopefully we can bring forward um, new changes and just new sentiments of how we all come together collectively. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, just a quick couple of quick comments. Uh, I just wanted to thank the student for a wonderful uh, student report. Thanks, Gabby, for your letter. Thank Patricia Shepard for that very interesting piece in social emotional learning. I too am open to learning and I learned some very interesting things from you tonight. Thanks again. Thanks to Adrian and his awesome team to make this all possible. You guys work very hard and we really do appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thanks to our hard work in our BA, who has taught me a lot along the way. <laughs> and our hard working attorney, thank you. Thank you for your guidance as always. Thanks to our superintendent and his hard working administrative team. It's not easy. But you guys are really working hard, and we are just here to support you. Thank you. Uh, I just want a special welcome to Danny saying to our wonderful school board in Hackensack. We look forward to working with you, and we are just looking to uh, you learn from us. We learn from you, and uh, we thank you for whatever expertise you can bring to our school board. I just want to say, let's all just give a round of applause. We're really proud to have you here with us. Thank you. Uh, another one or two. two uh, congratulations to our Governor's Educator of the Year recipients. We're all very proud of you all. You're a shining light to our district and to our community. And I'm sure we do appreciate and I'm sure our kids do appreciate you too. Thanks for all you do. And uh, I just want to say uh, to all the, we thank everyone for calling in as always. We do appreciate your comments. And like Trustee Rodriguez said, we do listen to them. And we have decisions to make on different sides of the spectrum. And at times, they're not easy. But we're up to the challenge, and we're here to do our best. Uh, and I just wanted to, Ms. Ms. Tavares, thank you for your comment. You said you do support our board. We are truly grateful for that. And we do hope you continue to support us. Just want to make a quick comment. You made a comment that uh, you found it insulting that uh, I said, uh, um, that you, you mentioned something that I told you. So I'm not sure how you interpreted what I said. I'm not sure. So I just wanted to give you some clarification. If I offended you, I apologize, but I need to give you some clarification. When I mentioned I told you so, I was referring to quarantine and if we do have school closures, which do happen in school districts. So I was just saying, if it does happen or when it does happen, I just want us to pull together and work together to get through, you know, the period, you know. So I, I didn't offer it in an insulting way. So I'm not sure how you interpret it, but I, I'm just here to, clear that up with you, that's what I actually meant. I didn't want, you know, anyone to say, I told you so, you know, you had to quarantine. These are things that do happen and they do happen in almost every district. So that's kind of what I was referring to. I hope that does add some clarification. If not, you can reach out to me, you can send me an email and I will be happy to speak to you about it. But once again, that's not what I meant. But sometimes, you know, sometimes things when they're said, uh, they can be interpreted differently, but I'm willing to have a conversation with you. But I, if I insulted you, I'm sorry, but that was not my intention. So I hope my clarification did shed some light on what I was trying to uh, say to you. And uh, I just want to say welcome about, welcome back to our kids. Uh, I heard a lot of kids were excited to be back to school. Uh, so I just want to say welcome back to you. And I just hope uh, and wish you uh Success, successful week to you and our staff and our teachers and everyone that are involved in teaching our kids in Atkinsack and giving them a wonderful education. Be safe, uh, stay healthy, continue to practice social distancing and continue to wear your mask and do whatever you do to protect yourselves and your families. Be safe. And on that note, 
I Board president, if I yes, may, Mr. Sanchez. Yeah, like just to say um, one thing that came up tonight, and you know, before I forget, um, there was a comment about the swimming. The swimming will happen. We just didn't receive the uh, the names in time, but the swimming will start. You know, on the official date that it's allowed to start, we will approve ratify those per, those two employees at the next board meeting. Thank, thank you for asking that. Yeah. So and mm -hmm. and uh, listen, that that's it for me. I just want to thank everybody for their participation. Um, we appreciate your comments. Uh, obviously, you know, we're not always going to agree. But we always listen. So thank you again. Um, your participation is, are, is always welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Uh, motion? motion. Motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good evening, everyone. Good night. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Be safe, everyone. Good night. Thank you, guys.